So we had a doozy, a doozy of a story developing over the past 24 hours or so. It started with a blind item. So there was a blind item that kind of kicked things off here and got the parte going. Uh, and if you hadn't been following along, there were some vague reports that a nameless member of the Indianapolis football team was being investigated for betting on NFL games, including games involving the Indianapolis football team. Now, uh, the story was uh, who done it. We love a who done it story. Those are good stories. Who done it? Uh, we we didn't know it was a blind item, as we said. Uh, for a few hours, we heard reckless speculation. And there were people throwing out random names. I think it's this guy. Uh, no, no, it's this guy. No, 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 it's that guy. And, it, and that's how it went. But it actually did not last all that long. Uh, people were, were trying to guess. But eventually, the crapola hit the buzzsaw. And, man, did it hit the buzzsaw. Uh, we were told the NFL is indeed investigating a Indianapolis defensive back by the name of, he's also a kick returner, Isaiah Rogers. This is not Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. So Isaiah Rogers, uh, guilty in the eyes of being investigated, they think he might be guilty of violations of the gambling policy, which means we can sell gambling, but you can't gamble. Uh, if you work in the NFL, cannot do it. Now, the Colts confirmed the story. They didn't deny the story. They confirmed the probe. In fact, the Colts released a boilerplate statement saying that we are aware of the NFL's investigation and will have no further comment at this time. Okay. Uh, now, Rodgers himself, Isaiah Rodgers got involved in this. The defensive back went on social media, and he validated the story that it was him. The Colts didn't say that. The uh, the player said it on social media, a post on Monday night saying that he uh, wants to, quote, take full responsibility for his actions. So let us discuss the question. The NFL investigating Colts defensive back kick return Isaiah Rogers for illegal betting. Big deal, little deal, or no deal. So after a thorough review of the available evidence, this is not a big deal. It is not no deal. I have it in the little deal category, subject to change. So I have reverb, diluted, and Roman law. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make a three-leg parlay. It's what we're going to make, because apparently this guy was betting on the parlay. I don't know. All right, so uh, A, based on what we don't know and uh, what we think we know, uh, you put all those things together, it's not a big deal. All right, the reporting is rather limited. Uh, and from what we are hearing, it, it is a little deal situation. It is a little deal situation with a chance of being a much bigger story. But we're going to leave it in the little category at this time. Now, Isaiah Rogers was a sixth-round pick out of UMass. He's played three seasons in the NFL. You've likely never heard of him unless you're a nerd and a geek and, and all that. He's earned $2.2 million in his career. He's played 1500 uh, snaps in three years in the NFL, and he started nine games last season. So he did play quite a bit for a morbidly bad, bad to the bone Indianapolis Colts team uh, a year ago. And it is appropriate that in college he played for the Minutemen because it appears his career is about to be over in a minute. Uh, and this is going to be a massive hit. Now, we don't know what the punishment's going to be. You look at some of the other suspensions that were for far less than this guy was supposedly doing. Calvin Ridley, for example, who was suspended for an entire season. There were a gaggle of Detroit Lions that got in trouble. But Calvin Ridley is kind of the, the outline that people are following. So if this guy gets suspended for a year, and he what he did was a lot more based on what we have been reading here, then he is going to lose 
$2.7 million. That was his salary that he was scheduled to make next NFL season if he had played the season. Certainly, barring a last-second stay of execution, uh, he's going to lose close to $3 million from a season-long uh, no-pay suspension. But that's kind of been the norm. That's been the norm. You get suspended for a season if you cross a certain a certain threshold. And based on the information that we have, Isaiah Rogers, uh, the social media post, which was certainly an admission of guilt, right? I'm not a lawyer. I can play one on the radio. Certainly seemed like an admission of guilt. Open and shut case. The reverb on this is massive. Because yet again, every time these stories have popped up, they send shockwaves around the NFL. There are many sleepless football players who are suffering from anxiety, and they're up late. That's good for us, right? When people are up late and they can't sleep, that's good for us because they, uh, they're they lonely, there's not a lot to talk about and do at night, so they turn on shows like this. Uh, but, man, eventually everyone will become numb to these stories. We're not, we're not there yet. This is all new, and gambling's been around forever. Guys have been betting on football forever. It's just now legal, and now that it's legal, now there's a, a way to track – All of this stuff. Now, page two, are we getting the full story? Are we getting the full story from what happened with this guy from the Colts? So I am skeptical. I am skeptical of that being the case here. We're getting what I would call a diluted version of events. That's always my position on on these stories Uh, It's been very consistent over the years when these scandals have popped up. We've talked about them uh, because they're great radio. And, man, do we love talking about these kind of stories here. When a scandal happens, man, I mean, uh, boy, I mean, dude. So the sports leagues, the, the information that gets out is watered down. It's diluted. It's often sugar coated. Great example of that. Years ago, we had a guy named Tim Donahue who was rigging NBA games, and the NBA said, no, this guy's a lone wolf. Nobody else was involved. Only Tim Donahue. Nobody else. Uh, And they looked at the phone records, and Tim Donahue was going back and forth with multiple officials, hundreds of phone calls. But only he was involved. Nobody else was involved. Yeah, that's the ticket, right? Just a rogue actor. They always got to go down that road. Uh, Now, Isaiah Rogers, this guy with the Colts, uh, the uh, the early reports estimate that it was around a hundred bets. That that seems like a lot if you're not a gambler, but if you're betting an entire NFL season, you know it's it's every week a few bets. Thursday, Saturday, uh, during late in the season they play Saturday, Sunday, all season obviously, and Monday night. Uh, that's that's not all that many if you're betting a hundred uh, over a course of a season. Uh, which is what the estimate is. They they also say that most of the bets were in the twenty five to fifty dollar range. There were some low four figure bets. Uh, they also say that Rogers was betting on his own team. He was betting on the Colts. That's the Pete Rose territory. Betting on your own team. It's also known as Pandora's box. Remember when I first got into the business, Pete Rose was a big topic of conversation. And low information people that don't understand gambling and sports say, well, as long as Pete bet on the Reds, everything's okay. Uh, and not quite. Because if you always bet on the Reds and then uh, sometimes you don't, you're pretty much telling the people taking the bets that you don't think your team's going to win. Maybe you should go the other way on that. And uh, so it's a dead giveaway. It's a dead giveaway. Uh, and, and that's a similar situation. Now, I, we don't know who he was gambling with uh, Rogers. Uh, he was using an app uh, on his phone uh, and doing it from the Colts facility, uh, which is fascinating to me that this uh, continues to be a thing, that uh, you're doing it from the team facility. That is uh, stunning. Uh, and the other issue here, and the reason I'm reserving judgment to put this in the very big category, there were a couple of games last year for Indianapolis that were so outrageous, you think there was some funny business going on. And that, when you combine that with a player who was betting on the game, and the, the reports are, again, they're downplaying it, you know, 25 50 bucks. I think a lot of guys bet 25 or 50 bucks on NFL games. That's, that's kind of what I am uh, doing most of the time uh, from, from week to week. And so anyway, 
the 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 point is that there were two games that stand out that give you pause. Um, and one of them was in week 13, Colts, Cowboys, Sunday night football, close game going to the fourth quarter. Dallas put up a 33-point spot in the fourth quarter of that game, if you remember. Then if I my timeline is right, Indy had a bye week. They then played the Vikings in Minnesota on a Saturday and then led that game 33 to nothing at halftime of that game and then had the biggest, most extreme ride on the Vomit Comet we have ever seen uh, and, and lost the biggest lead in regular season NFL history, 33-point halftime lead. They lost to the Vikings, if you remember that game, and there was some, something that, that smelled a little fishy about both those games. And will we ever know? I know there's a lot of great conspiracy theorists that are putting conspiracies together on the, all this. We'll keep an eye on it. Now, the last word here, last word now on this gambling story. So some players the rule violation. There was a story behind a paywall on The Athletic, and they quoted a couple of unnamed veterans, one a seven-year veteran, one a 10-year veteran, who claims uh, that they had no idea, no idea the players were outlawed from placing bets on team property. <laughs> they said that. And, and uh, even, they didn't realize they couldn't bet on uh, different sports. Uh, another undercover baller, according to The Athletic, said he didn't think players were aware of the rules, complaining it's so specific. So the question on this one, is it possible that a number of NFL players were obtuse to the gambling rules of the NFL. So to answer the question, is it possible? Sure. Yeah, we've all been in meetings at, at jobs where they go over the rules and that's when you take a nap and you tune out and you don't pay attention. Right? We've all been there. I, I have a lot of bullcrap meetings at my job, not as much recently, but you, know, you listen and, uh, with half an ear and all that. But this really comes down to common sense. And I know common sense is not that common now, and I would like to give the players the benefit of the doubt that they're not just a bunch of dumb jocks. That the I know the NFL's in the gambling business, but unfortunately, even if you don't know the rules, right, you you're, you're still screwed. You're still screwed on that. And we present Roman law. If it wasn't for those damn Romans, we'd all be in good shape, right? Because they came up with the concept that ignorance of the law. Excuses no one. Right? That was their their thing, and that's the, the standard societies have kept over the years. And uh, we wish that they did allow ignorance of the law. Every time I got pulled over, I don't know what the speed limit is, officer. I have no idea. you got to let me go. I have no idea. Uh, but unaware of the law, uh, and this is not the law, although you know, it's NFL rules. There are uh, rules in each state uh, that vary. There's no national rules on this, but uh, you, you don't escape liability because you didn't know what the rule was and you were merely uh, unaware of its content. And that uh, goes all the way back uh, to uh, Roman law. Imagine how many Roman guys got away with breaking rules. I don't know the law. And then they had to change it. They're like, well, wait a minute. That doesn't count. How dare you? Shame on you.